Hi everybody, this is Danielle from Blank Canvas. Thank you for joining me for today's video. And I'm really excited because it's a new year. It's January 2013. And um, in Trinidad Tobago, we are getting ready. We're really, really getting ready for Carnival, which is in February, which is the 11th and the 12th. And we don't have much time. So everybody's just getting in again. Everybody's really excited, getting their costumes ready. And of course, I had to do my carnival videos, my carnival themed videos for the special occasion that is Trinidad Tobago Culture. And I wanted to do something a little different this year. Um, last year I did it according, I did makeup looks according to vets. And this year I wanted to focus more on the history, development, and evolution of carnival in Trinidad Tobago. It's going to be looking at it in a more holistic way. Um, so that it will define and explain and illustrate how we have come to be who we are as a Trinidadian people. And um, I wanted to go through the different phases of carnival evolution in Trinidad Tobago and do the makeup looks applicable to those particular segments. So I'm going to have about four or five segments and they're each going to explain the phase that was going through. So the first phase is going to be um, the masquerade ball and this was done in the 1780s in the 18th century and this was when the plantation owners and the planters you know they were of European descent or they were direct they were directly Europeans and they would have these masquerade balls very depictive of what was happening in Europe at the time and in order to make themselves um, feel more at home they would have these masquerade balls very elaborate it was a very festive and party mood and it was like the first step into what we know as carnival in Trinidad Tobago today and uh, very soon the slaves the ex-slaves would adapt and have their own version of that of that ball so i just want to thank everybody that helped me do my research and helped me get more in depth and more in touch with what is my own culture i want to give special thanks to kenway marie from the department of creative and festival arts from the university of western Indies and Dickerson campus he was very intrinsic to helping me understand what the feel was from each era in our history of carnival development and he is a lecturer in carnival studies so i'm gonna get right into the look today i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it's not too long and i do hope that you will stay tuned for the following segments i'm really really excited and i really hope that you do stay for the finale of this video series so let's get started so to start off this look i'm going to be doing my foundation my blush and my lipstick and I'm going to start off with my sleek. I'm going to get my piece of light. I'm going to powder now and I'm using my MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation in NW45. For the cheeks, I'm going to be using a bright pink. And this one, this one here is from Sasha Cosmetics and it's called Indian Rose. I do want to put on quite a bit of blush because that was the technique that we were using at that time and I wanted it to be you know, quite strong and a little frolic in front of the face because when it is we put on the mask I wanted to look as if it's a mask that's sitting on a face and not just make up around a mask so I'm going to be using this pot paint from Sleek and it's in the color rosette I'm just gonna, I have a mask here and this is going to be kind of like my template um, kind of and you can see that this one covers the entire nose and the brows as well and I haven't seen any um, mask that let the brows show through so I'm going to camouflage my brows as best as I can I'm going to be using a little bit of glue on them first to lay them down flat I just want the brows, the hairs to be here. Concealer, and this is from Kira Mask. 
I have the um, camouflage cream and finishing powder sample kit and I have it in dark so <clears throat> I'm going to be using one that's going to camouflage and I'm going to be using I think dark number one which is this color here I do want to go in, of course, with this one to be shadow insurance and put a little bit of that on the eye. I'm going to ring my eyes with Bonani's liquid white pencil in black and I'm going to set that with Makeup Forever Star Powder in number 950. I want to use a bright pink and this is Mel from Ambrosia Cosmetics. Use Graftobian Creme Foundation in white and an eyeliner brush. So I'm just gonna do a really rough sketch where I want the perimeter of the mask to be. Really blend out. I'm gonna bring it up on the nose a bit. Going okay, now with the same crafted and crumb foundation, which is really like face paint, and a foundation brush, and just fill in all the rest of the things within the mask area. I'm going to set it with six one finishing powder, which is just like a neutral powder, but it has a slight, slight pink shimmer to it. Okay, I'm going to see about contouring and putting in some dimension into the mask. And to do that, I'm going to be using Grey from La Femme, which is this matte color right here. It's a very smooth very very smooth color and um, I'm gonna enjoy using that to blend because it will blend really well. I'm just blending on the side of the nose.
what I'm going to blend all around the edge of the mask so it kind of it looks like it's not painted on face kind of last if we can lift it off more concentrated brush as a uh, dancer head and this is from Cure Mask and I'm going to do contouring now in the eye area. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of pizzazz now to the mask. Now that I've got the shape and the contouring down like I wanted, I am going to add some glitter. And this is from Sleek, and it's a little eyeliner in pink. A little? No, it's in Diablo, and it's two, number 271. It's just a pink. some new gems here in fuchsia and pink and I'm gonna put that all around. This is um, the one from LA Splash and it's Lid Splash. I'm just gonna put it on a few at a time. Okay everybody, this is the finished look. The only thing I did extra was to add more glitter to the entire eyelid area and um, just more glitter in the mask itself and I put some purple glitter in between the gems. So this is what the look, this is what the mask looks like up close. You can see all the little strokes of glitter in the eyelid completely covering glitter and it has defined it has definition and there's definition in the mask itself and i just think it's a really pretty look it's very daring if you want to be going out um with it but very very appropriate for carnival and yeah that's it i hope you enjoyed the video i know it's a little long i probably will have to speed up some parts but i hope you enjoyed it all the same and you have an excellent excellent day today and i'll see you in my next video So it's going to be taking, um, it's going to be looking at it. <coughs>